Welcome to today's Diabetic 365 show and we have Bill from Happy One Happy Diabetic here and he's going to share his experiences as being diabetic from almost 18 years and uh, let's get started. Hi Bill, how are you? I'm doing well, how are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good, happy Father's Day. Oh thank you, thank you, this is my first Father's Day, I have a uh nine-month-old baby girl that's sleeping upstairs, so daddy's got to be quiet. <laughs> so uh, the first question to you is, you've been diagnosed when you were nine years old, and uh, how did you feel, like what was your first reaction, and uh, I read that you're the only child diabetic or juvenile diabetic in your school at that time, so you know, what was your reaction, first reaction to that? Yeah, you know, it was difficult because being a young kid, you, you don't know what diabetes is. Um, you know, I had a friend who just recently got diagnosed and he was 25 years old. So, you know, being able to comprehend that diagnosis is a little bit, I don't want to say more easy, but you obviously can understand the complications and, you know, the definition of what diabetes is. Um, but when I was younger, you know, I didn't know what was wrong with me. I didn't know if I had some icky disease that I could, you know, just touch somebody and give it to them. I mean, I really didn't know, uh, nor did my family know either. So it was a really big learning experience, um, not only for me growing up, but for my family as well, because nobody in my family had type 1 diabetes as well. So it was a little bit difficult, I want to say. And being the only person at school, uh, you know, with diabetes was also difficult. Um, but kind of being at that young age, I think I was lucky um, in, with the fact that, you know, I think kids knew I was different, but at that age, you're not really in that teenager age where, you know, it's all me, 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 and, you know, if you're different, I don't want to talk to you type of thing. So in that sense, I was pretty lucky and developed some pretty good relationships with uh, some teachers and my nurse at the time. Okay. So uh, you were a juvenile diabetic at the time and uh, you were a good sportsman and athlete too. So how did your uh, instructors manage you in the team? Like, uh, Did they tell you, hey Bill, you have to be careful at this point, you shouldn't play this, you shouldn't play that, something like that? Yeah, you know, I was lucky. I, um, you know, never was held back as far as being, you know, a diabetic and playing in sports. Um, but I did learn some lessons early on. When I was uh, nine years old, only had diabetes maybe six months, I still wasn't really familiar with the symptoms of hypoglycemia, low blood sugar. And unfortunately, I actually had a seizure while I was on third base in Little League. I had, uh, you know, just gotten a hit or whatnot and was at third base and didn't feel good and uh, ended up having a seizure. The ambulance had to come and uh, completely blacked out and uh, woke up in the hospital. Um, you know, I don't need to get in detail with all that stuff, but um, it kind of was a learning experience for me, I guess, early on. So I always had to make sure that, you know, my blood sugars were definitely in check while I was playing, making sure that, you know, I didn't do too much insulin. Uh, back then, I mean, I was on NPH and regular insulin, so the insulin was a little bit slower acting. Um, but they didn't limit my, you know, ability to play any position, you know, at all. And I think actually diabetes made my sports, I want to say, um, not my sports management, but, you know, the amount of time and effort and practice I put in, it made it more organized and scheduled. And I think it was actually a benefit to me in some cases, though, I mean, I also got a ton of low blood sugars while I was playing in high school and in college. So that was just something that you always had to deal with. And I think the challenge that I always had was I don't want to be getting low on the on the field, but also I don't want to be really, really high as well because that was affecting my performance as well. So it was trying trying to find that happy medium and doing that with, you know, carbohydrates and checking my blood sugar frequently was pretty nice. Okay. So how was your friend's reaction like when you were sitting with them in the classroom? How was it different because you're the only guy who is kind of diff different from others? Right. So how did you manage with your friends and all your now your coworkers also? You know, this is a good uh, good bit of advice and you know, I get the question a lot from some teenagers. They they ask me, go they go, Bill, I'm in school and you know, I don't want everybody to know I have diabetes, but I feel like everybody knows and I, it feels kind of weird. Um, 
when when I was growing up with diabetes and I was in high school and middle school, I had a couple really good friends. And what I suggest to people that have diabetes is let those really good friends know exactly what needs to be done if you have a low blood sugar or if your blood sugar is high, basically, so that maybe they can start recognizing some of those symptoms that you might not even recognize. Um, it's always good to have a buddy that can help you out in those situations because if you're not letting anybody know and you're really trying to hide it, you're really just going to make it a lot worse and you're going to kind of struggle through a low blood sugar when, you know, if you had a buddy that was helping you out and kind of, you know, had your back, so to speak, I think it makes it a lot easier to treat, um, you know, your diabetes in a school setting. Um, interestingly enough, I, I had mentioned that I had a friend that recently got diagnosed five years ago, and he went to high school with me. And uh, it was funny. I was talking with him. I said, because uh, he called me right up when he got diagnosed. And I asked him, I said, so, like, in high school, I said, what was the deal? I mean, obviously, you knew I had diabetes. It wasn't like a conversation that I had with him. But um, I said, well, were people, like, talking behind my back? Or, like, what was the thing? And he said, no, not at all. He said, you know, I, I gave you a call, A, because you're my friend, but B, because you, it seemed like you had things under control and you didn't let it prevent you from doing anything. So when I was in high school, sure, I, you know, I concealed my, you know, syringes in my pockets and my bags and stuff like that. I didn't have a sign on, uh, you know, saying that I was diabetic. But people knew, and the right people knew what to do when I had a low blood sugar, and they really stuck up for me. Okay, that's good. So uh, coming to this lot of huge social networking now we have available due to this Internet. So back then in 1988, you didn't have anything like this. Or right. social networks or any kind of um, you know um, any social media or any kind of support forums how did you manage this at that time you know I remember actually uh, when I was young going to some support groups right away and the support groups are really more I want to say like a parental support group my parents were there and I was sitting next to them and other parents were there and kids were sitting next to them and it really was a doctor just giving a lecture on what diabetes is, uh, less of kind of an interaction, kind of a counseling type of a thing. But probably the most important thing that I ever did, and my mother always said she'd pay a million dollars for me to do this again, was I went to a diabetes camp over the summer for two years in a row. And it was a camp uh, called Camp Hazen in Connecticut where there was a two-week period of time where um, – kids with diabetes and normal kids would be at camp, so to speak. Um, and it was just a great experience to be away from home, and I really had a setting where I really had to step up to the plate and really start to manage my diabetes on my own. My parents weren't there to give me shots anymore, and I wasn't doing shots on my own at that time, and it was something that I had to learn how to do. The other really neat thing was you started sharing stories with other kids that had diabetes, and you know, somebody, you know, I know kids go to these camps now, you know, somebody has an insulin pump and maybe you're just on shots and maybe that gave you uh, enough courage to try something new uh, with your diabetes management approach, which is something that I think is a really good bit of advice is always to try, you know, try something new if it's out there and you can afford it because if you don't try it, you'll just never know if it's going to work for you. Okay, so you have been to a lot of summer camps when you were a kid. What are some of the things you learned and what do you advise the kids right now? Yeah, I would strongly, 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 if I, had a, if I had a child who had type 1 diabetes and they got diagnosed a few months ago, um, I would definitely, I mean, not a few months ago, a year ago, whatever the case is, maybe a few months and then having them go to camp might be a little overwhelming, um, but I definitely would bring them to a summer camp. It'll make them feel like they're not the only one out there. And I think that's the biggest challenge with this disease is that you think you're just all alone. Like I said, when I was growing up in, at school, I was the only one with diabetes. I couldn't imagine if I had, like, a little di diabetic pal, you know, with me, we would be, like, the closest of friends. So building those relationships at camp are really important. And I think if you're around other people with diabetes, regardless of the age, whether it's a support group or just meeting up, you get motivated with your diabetes to do a better job. 
and I think it doesn't matter if the person sitting next to you that has diabetes is, is an awful control and I'm an awful control and you're just talking about it. It just makes you feel a little bit more open and I think it gives you some of that motivation to do a better job with your management. Okay. So coming to your family here, so when you were a kid, how did your mother and father tune in to understand your feelings? That's the main aspect or it's a very difficult part for a parent to understand his or her um, kids feelings so how did you how did they manage to do that and you hear a lot of these questions from the parents yeah you know it's very interesting and unfortunately when I was getting diagnosed uh, two years after my diagnosis my parents ended up getting a divorce um, so it was a hard time for me with my management of diabetes and at the time the cost of my uh, test strips was a lot of money and I can remember my father uh, going to CVS and you know saying oh my gosh thirty two dollars for these test strips and you know not that I thought you know I was uh, you know involved in my parents divorce but I felt so bad when it came to the cost of some of these uh, diabetes supplies um, so that was something that was always on my mind I knew that this disease that I had was costing my family money which is really unfortunate if you think about it um, you know our family we didn't really talk about this type of type of things we didn't have like a diabetes open discussion at the dinner table it was more uh, it was more stressful it was more hey Bill did you check your blood sugar what was it we need to do the right amount of insulin you know end of discussion type of a thing I think it was more that they were worried about me and number two, in the beginning, they were the ones that were giving me the insulin injections. So as a kid, I always remember just running away from them because I didn't want to get these insulin injections because they hurt so much. Um, but later on when I grew up, I started to understand a little bit, you know, what it felt like for them to be running around with that needle, right? And then you're chasing your kid around. I mean, it feels awful. So, um, you know, unfortunately, we didn't kind of talk about those things till later. But, you know, every day you just had to get through it and move on because, you know, you're going to wake up the next morning and diabetes is still going to be there. So I think we just took the approach of, you know, day by day, what's your blood sugar now? What are we going to do about it now? And tried to manage it as best we could. So do you think that pe parents also need to be educated equally as a child who is diabetic? Absolutely, absolutely. And, I mean, we were talking about in the past uh, conversation that, you know, the Internet wasn't around back then. I can guarantee you now that if I was diagnosed right now and I was a little nine-year-old and my parents had the availability of the Internet and the social networking and, you know, folks like Lorraine and Caleb and, and sharing their diabetes experience, they would have became a lot more educated on diabetes, how to help me, and also how to help them. You know, we never really talk about, you know, my parents needed some support and some help. And, you know, the doctor can only give you so much information in a 15-minute visit. And I think those questions that are really important sometimes are the ones that you don't ask because you're a little bit embarrassed or you think maybe that you should have already known the answer to this question. But to be able to go on the Internet and look up some of the questions that you might have and see the responses that other parents had, I think would have made my parents feel a lot more confident with the diagnosis that I got. Okay.